This is the Retirement Education Hour. Hi, everyone, and welcome to the show. I'm Megan Mozak, joined by financial instructors Kurt Cassidy and Dr. Paul Mettler. They're both with the Retirement Education Foundation, and we have a great program lined up for you today. We're going to be talking about taxes and why tax planning in particular, it might be the most important lever that you can pull for retirement. We're going to dive into that. Plus, we're going to tell you about the Retirement Education Foundation's courses, why these are so important to attend, and how you can get a full download of information on planning for retirement successfully here in the 21st century. It does not happen by accident. These courses are held at major colleges and universities right here in your community, and we'll tell you much more about that. Of course, I am here with Kirk and Paul, and they are instructors with the Retirement Education Foundation. And it might be good, Kirk, maybe just to take a little half step back and talk about the foundation before we jump into this very important tax topic. This foundation has a very specific mission, doesn't it? It does. And, and the foundation we founded, I, I think it's almost 12 years ago. And, and I know we've been doing radio shows for years and years and years around the country and our podcasts. But I think it's always helpful once in a while to give a little bit of history around these courses, where they came from and wh- why we started 12 years ago teaching these classes. So the classes are eight hours in length. They were intentionally designed by the charity to be really advanced, almost master's level, comprehensive education for that, not the, not just the person, the average baby boomer who's going to retire with two $250,000 saved for retirement, but there really is a gap in financial, advanced financial literacy for that one to $10 million family who really could, if they plan out retirement properly, spend more, pay a lot less taxes, and live retirement with much less fear around outliving their money if they understand all the different levers that are truly available to pull for a retirement plan. And the reason we started this foundation 12 years ago, and and now, by the way, we've taught tens of thousands of people at so many major universities around Michigan and in Missouri now and, and in different places around the country. The reason is, is that the financial service industry is, there's this void for that one to $10 million family. They're not going to spend the time or the resources to build those comprehensive plans, partially because the community doesn't understand all the levers. And so that's the levers that you can pull to minimize taxes. And, and you could take withdrawal rates of five, six, seven, eight percent withdrawal rates, not live on the three or four percent like the financial service industry tells you. We know this because we take care of over a thousand people in our private practices. We're responsible for over two billion dollars. So we've been collecting data for decades now and we know how to execute the most efficient, effective retirement plans. And we wanted to teach that to the communities where we teach the classes. So That's what the classes are about. And I'm glad today's topic is around taxes because if done properly, many of these one to $10 million families, even the 500,000 to $10 million families can save really hundreds of thousands of dollars in taxes by understanding how to, how and when to take income. And, and Paul, I know today we're going to talk about taxes are on sale. They're not, they're just going to go up. So people are going to be paying more and more taxes through retirement. Yeah, I mean, I think we have short memories, right? I think we all, we all, you know, complain about how much taxes we pay when we forget that how much taxes we used to pay in the past was significantly higher and could easily go back to that. And we're going to get in some data, right? Right now, taxes are actually cheap. And part of the goal of planning is anticipating and anticipating future tax increases. What do we need to do today to prepare for that? Paul, you said taxes are cheap, and, and, and I like to say they're on sale. Look, historically speaking, they are really cheap. And we're going to talk about some of the historical marginal tax rates and all the problems today we're going to talk about, all problems, why taxes are going to have to go up. There, there's really no choice. They're going to have to make some cuts, but taxes are also going to go up. So, look, if you want to learn how to save hundreds of thousands of dollars in taxes and how to spend more retire earlier and have less fear, attend one of these eight-hour courses that are being taught at all the major universities in your area. If you'd like to register, go to retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org. You know, Kirk, you mentioned historical perspective. You go back to the 1950s, 
early 60s, the highest marginal tax bracket was 90%. And there's some da- data that suggests that unless we make some significant changes, we could go back there in the future. 90%, what, what's today? 37%? Is that the highest tax bracket? It is. And uh, yes. And, and, and we know, I mean, if nothing happens, Paul, and we're going to talk more about this as we go through, but if nothing happens at all and Congress doesn't agree on some sort of an adjustment, the tax cuts that we are currently experiencing living through since the last administration, they call them the Trump tax cuts, those, those all go away. They're going to sunset at the end of 2025 unless Congress can agree on an adjustment. And they're not going, well, it's unlikely they're going to because they can't agree on anything right now. So, We know for everyone, at the end of 2025, taxes are going to reset to what they were previously before the Trump tax cuts. We'll go through what that that will look like. But what Paul is referencing is there's a bigger issue. I mean, we have hundreds of trillions of dollars of unfunded liabilities between Medicare, Medicaid, Social Security. There's so many bills that are coming due that we can't pay that something something's going to have to give and interest rates rising and we have to service the debt of the deficits that we have already accumulated something has to happen paul and one of the things that are going to happen is taxes are going up and we're not going li- to some of us won't like it and you know probably some other things need to happen but that's for sure happening paul yeah and it's, there's no doubt and we're going to get into all the reasons why but at the end of the day if if you know, part of planning, and this is what the show is all about, is helping people plan for retirement, getting them to the class so they can do better and anticipate these things. Taxes is obviously one of the most important levers they have to think about. So talk about the class. What do people need to do to, to attend the class? So, Paul, I'm glad, I'm glad you, you said it that way. because th- So these classes are eight hours in length, and sometimes that overwhelms people. It's eight hours for a reason. It, it, it is really advanced. It's almost master's level courses. That's why they're taught at major universities like the University of Michigan, like the University of uh, uh, Oakland University, Michigan State University, uh, uh, a number of colleges and universities in Missouri. So they're eight hours in length. We stream the classes live. So if you don't want to go to the universities, you can watch as we're teaching in the universities to attend. All you have to do is make a $29 donation to charity. Register at retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanning. And we'll return with Kirk and Paul. There's plenty more right here on the Retirement Education Hour. We're back with the Retirement Education Hour. Hi, everyone. Megan Mozak alongside financial instructors Kirk Cassidy and Dr. Paul Mettler with the Retirement Education Foundation. We want you to get registered for the foundation's courses. These are almost master's level type courses on retirement planning. And they're so necessary for success in retirement here in the 21st century. So here's how you can register. You can go to the website, retirementplanningedu.org, or you can call 800-240-8981. And keep in mind, no matter where you're listening today, we have locations for you at major local colleges and universities. If you're listening in the state of Michigan, keep in mind these courses are taught at the University of Michigan, Eastern Michigan University, Michigan State University, both campuses, Novi and Troy, or Oakland University. And of course, if you're listening today from the state of Missouri, welcome. Glad to have you here with us today. Check the website for the locations at major colleges and universities in your community. Here's that website again, retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org or call 800-240-8981. If you'd like to go back and listen to our show today all on taxes in retirement, Find it wherever you find your favorite podcast. Simply search for Retirement Education Hour. Kirk and Paul, as we've been talking about taxes and tax planning in particular, why do you say historically the marginal tax rates, where they are and where we are now, indicate to you that taxes can only go up, Kirk? Uh, Megan, the historical marginal tax rate in our country has been 56%. So we are significantly below where we have been historically speaking we have tax cuts that are going to sunset at the end of 2025 
where we're going to have those of you who are in the 12% tax bracket bumping up to the 15. Those of you who are in the 22 are going to bump up to the 25. Uh, those of you who are in the 24 are going to bump up to the 28, so on and so forth. So everyone's taxes are going to go up at the end of 2025 automatically unless Congress can agree on some change. That's what's automatically going to happen. That's without considering the amount of debt and deficits we've amassed and some of the population trend problems that we are confronted with that are going to really start to pile up. And I, I, in a minute, I'm going to pass it to Paul to go through some of the data because even I, who this is what I live and breathe, and, and one of the lead financial instructors for the, for the, financial, uh, for the Retirement Education Foundation and also uh, manage a, a private practice, I was surprised. Even I was surprised by some of the things that are around the corner that are going to become so problematic. And when we look at what the data is telling us, some major changes have to come. And it, I know people have been screaming about this for years. And I would say, Paul, they weren't wrong. They were early. And I guess by definition, if they were early, they were definitionally wrong <laughs> by on the timing. But th this is going to come to a head. And what's going to move this along faster than it has over the last 10 years is interest rates going up. I mean, the cost to service the debt we have and the problems we have has gotten significantly more expensive. And I don't see a lot of relief on that end coming. So we're going to have to confront these things really quickly. And that means for retirees, your taxes are going up and you have a window right now to make some adjustments and some planning for the next 20, 30 years of retirement to minimize. And you can, you can minimize significantly. So make sure you stick around later in the show. We'll get into specific strategies, but I want Paul, I want us to lay out what some of the issues are and what's caused some of the issues. Well, you know, Kirk, you just said that the cost to service debt has increased significantly, but let's, let's, let's define significant. Between 22 and 23 so far, the cost to service that our debt has gone up 35%. We've gone from $352 billion that we spend just to service our debt to $475 billion. You know, part of the problem is these numbers are so huge, we've become somewhat numb to, to them, right? We're talking about federal debt that's $32 trillion. $32 trillion. This is the reason why Congressional Budget Office recently came out and said, if we don't make some significant changes to Social Security, Medicare, and Medicaid, because those are the big ticket items, tax brackets have to go up significantly, significantly. In fact, part of the problem is it's not just the current debt, but we're adding to it every single day. Every year, we add about $1.4 trillion to our debt because we have this huge deficit, right? We bring in less revenue than we spend, right? We, we spend about $6.3 trillion every year. We only bring in about 4.9. This is unsustainable, right? There's no way we can continue doing this. There are only a few options the government has. One of the big ones is obviously taxes, and, and, and there's just no way they can't go up because of these numbers. And so if you're politically motivated here, folks, on one side or the other, right, here's the thing. The truth usually lies in the middle, <laughs> that's a fact. So yes, taxes are going to have to go up, even if you're in a camp that don't want to see them go up. I get it. But the camp that says, well, let's just raise taxes and not change spending, you're also going to have to compromise here too. Spending is going to have to reduce no and question. taxes are going to have to go up. There's, no, we're not taking a political, this isn't a political show. This is an educational show intended to help people navigate retirement and build their own customized retirement plans. And we're talking about taxes and laying this out because that lever, that tax lever, while many of you think you're going to end up paying less taxes in retirement, that isn't true for most of the people who listen to our shows and the people attending our classes, right? That may be true for the average baby boomer. And I think this is the disconnect, Paul. The average baby boomer will retire with about two hundred or two hundred and fifty thousand dollars saved, so they they don't have enough money saved to see taxes go up. But the rest of you who have saved and have resources for retirement, those of you with a million to ten million dollars, 
your taxes are likely going up even without tax changes because you're going to be forced to take all the money you've never paid taxes on that are in your 401ks, IRAs. And so that's where that lever of knowing when to take it, how to take it, how to Roth convert, if you give to charity, how to use donor advice funds, QCDs, all the different things we're going to talk about today and all the things we drill down in eight hours of education in a university or college setting. That's why it's eight hours. That's why this is really comprehensive. It's really advanced. We teach it in one full Saturday, or we split it up into two evenings, four hours each evening. All you have to do is make a $29 donation to charity to attend these courses. If you'd like to register or learn more, go to retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org. And we'll be back. Plenty more with Kirk and Paul straight ahead right here on the Retirement Education Glad you're with us for the Retirement Education Hour. Megan Mozak alongside Kurt Cassidy and Dr. Paul Mettler, financial instructors with the Retirement Education Foundation. And we've been telling you about the foundation's courses. These are almost like master's level courses on retirement planning. And the good news is you can attend and we want you to get registered today. Spots do fill up quickly, so be sure to head over to the website. It's retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org. You can also call to register, 800-240-8981. And wherever you're listening to the show today, we have options for you. You can attend in person or virtually. That's right. These courses are streamed live. And if you'd like to be there in person, they're held at major colleges and universities. In Michigan, they're held at the University of Michigan, Eastern Michigan University, Michigan State University, Novi and Troy campuses, or Oakland University. And head over to the website for all of our Missouri listeners. You can see a list of locations at local colleges and universities for you. So go to retirementplanning.edu. Dot O-R-G. That's retirementplanningedu.org, or you can call 800-240-8981. We've been talking about taxes in your retirement. We're going to get back with Kirk and Paul here in just a minute to pick up where we left off, but I want to, I want to let you know that you can re-listen to this show and any others in our library when you find this program wherever you find your favorite podcast. That's right. You can search for Retirement Education Hour and listen as a podcast. Kirk and Paul, as we're talking about retirement planning, let's talk social security. How does this affect tax problems? So, right, everyone talks about social security. You guys probably see ads about social security everywhere about strategies on when and how to take your social security. But I think before we specifically talk about some of the strategies and why it's, I mean, social security is one of the major drivers of all of your taxes for all of your money that you have throughout retirement. But before, what I want to do is hopefully help people feel a little bit better about the sustainability of Social Security, for at least for most of our listeners, at least for baby boomers. First, there is a problem. And uh, everyone likes to sensationalize that problem and we call it in the in the media industry is clickbait. How do I get you to click on my article, listen to my show, watch my show? So I got to come out with these outrageous comments like Social Security is going to run out of money by 2034. So those headlines are partial truths. All right. Yes, Social Security ha- is is broken. There is major issues. There's no doubt. And there's a lot of reasons for it. But. Rest assured, by 2034, they don't run out of money. By 2034, they're going to be able to meet about 75 to 80. It's almost 80% of their obligations. So they're able to still meet 80% of their obligations by 2034. If you actually read the study that that the uh, Social Security Administration has done on uh, on sustainability, in that same study that tells you 2034, they can only meet 80% of its obligations. They also will tell you by 2090, they're still able to meet 70% of its obligation. So it's not going away. It's not going to stop. And by the way, P.S., it can't stop because we have almost 40% of baby boomers generating almost 100% of their income from Social Security. In other words, that's all they have. That's it. If they took Social Security away from you guys, 
we're going to have over a third of our baby boomers, our retirees, homeless. That's not going to happen. It's also a political suicide to suggest that we're going to change Social Security right now because baby boomers are the largest voting block. As soon as someone brings it up, they've got an ad running that they're throwing grandma off the cliff. So that's not going anywhere either. So, I, and I want to toss it to Paul, but Paul, I know I hear people when they come to our classes like, I'm not going to spend any money because they're going to take my Social Security away. They're not taking those people over the age of 50, 55. Nothing's going to happen to your Social Security. If you think it is, then, then you never can retire. Because no, I, for a married couple that's working, Paul, right? They, it's three million plus dollars of Social Security benefits over their lifetime. They can't replace it. Yeah, no, for sure. I mean, I think I think this is a perfect example of how two things can be true, right? There's no question that baby boomers are not losing the Social Security. They can't, right? It would be, as you said, no one would get elected. I mean, look what just happened recently. All they have to do is talk about changing Social Security, and you you know you sink your political future. So there's no question Social Security is not going away. At the same time, they have to fix it. And, and this, you know, the show is about tax planning and maybe why taxes are going to go up. And at the end of the day, right, Social Security is about inputs and outputs. And the reality is, the reality is there are just a lot more people taking out than putting in. That's just the bottom line. I mean, there are just a lot, you know, what are there, 32 million fewer children Baby boomers had 32 million fewer children than their parents, right? So they're just fewer people working, fewer people paying into the system, more people taking out. So I totally agree, right? It's, it, they're not taking it away, but we do have to fix it. And I think obviously one of the solutions is goes back to the topic at hand, which is increasing taxes. So yes, so increasing taxes and taxation on Social Security. So for those people younger and those people still working, they're going to see their taxes go up particularly around Social Security, I, that's the low-hanging fruit. There are some other changes that many experts suggest is likely to happen, but those will impact, you know, those under the age of 50. Maybe your children will be impacted. There's talks about potential means testing for younger people, which means the higher your adjusted gross income, the less Social Security benefits you get. Again, that's why you need to get educated and understand how to manage your adjusted gross income throughout retirement. Because there are so many ways to do that strategically. That's what we teach in the class. But, Paul, what's funny about what you said is it, it, you just described a Ponzi scheme. It's about inputs and outputs. Totally, right? totally. I mean, yes. So that's what it is, right? In our, in you, National birth rates are so low, and that is a problem. So Social Security is such an important topic. The strategies around Social Security and why you are all, 96% of people, this is the government's number, not mine, 96% of people make the wrong decision about when and how to take Social Security. You all think you got it right with your calculators. You all think you're smarter than you are around when and how you should be taking it because you've done cost-benefit analysis. And those are all wrong because no one's considering the taxation on your Social Security, taxation on your dividends and capital gains, and the taxation on your RMDs. That's what we're going to talk about next segment. And oh, by the way, that's why there's two hours dedicated to just taxes and Social Security and income, actually three hours, income planning in the full eight-hour course. So register for one of the eight-hour courses being taught at many of the major universities in your area. Go to retirementplanningedu.org. All you have to do is make a $29 donation. Register at retirementplanningedu.org. And we'll return. There's plenty more with Kirk and Paul straight ahead. Back with Kirk Cassidy and Dr. Paul Mettler here, financial instructors with the Retirement Education Foundation. Hi, everyone. This is the Retirement Education Hour. We're glad you've tuned in today and we want to make sure you're registered for the foundation's courses. These are deep dives, almost master's level courses on retirement planning, and you can reserve your seat today. These are taught at major colleges and universities wherever you're listening. If you're in Michigan, it's taught at the University of Michigan, Eastern Michigan University, Michigan State University, Novi or Troy campus, and Oakland University in Missouri. Check the website for your locations at colleges and universities nearby. Go to retirementplanningedu.org. Here's that web address again, retirementplanningedu.org. You can also pick up the phone and register. Here's the number, 800-240-8981. 
That's 800-240-8981. You can also stream these courses. They are streamed live every time. So be sure to check the website for more information on that. And if you'd like to go back and listen to this show or any others, you can find it wherever you find your favorite podcast. Simply search for the name of the show, Retirement Education Hour. Kirk and Paul, we've been talking about tax planning and how it's such an important lever to pull when you're discussing retirement and your retirement planning. What are the levers, though, to manage taxes and and how does Social Security end up impacting that? So we talked in the last segment about the challenges associated with Social Security and some of the things that we think are going to end up happening long term. But what we didn't cover is the impact Social Security has on the taxation of all of your money. And this is something the financial service industry chooses. They know they don't just choose to ignore it because no one really wants to do income tax planning, right? Income and tax planning over a 30-year period. So one of the things we do in the class is we're going to teach you how to project. And we give you, that's why it's eight hours. We teach you and we give you the skills to be able to project what your taxes will look like in your mid-70s so that right now as you're approaching retirement or in retirement, you know what dollars you should be taking from which accounts at what time when you should be taking Social Security. Here's the thing with Social Security. 96% of people, this is the government statistic, not ours, 96% of the people will make the wrong choice around when and how to take your Social Security. None of you know this answer. It's not a calculator that's going to drive this answer because the taxation on your Social Security and when you take Social Security drives whether or not your dividends will be taxable, whether your capital gains will be taxable, and how much of your required minimum distributions will be taxable. And yes, I, I, I said that. You don't have to pay taxes on all of your IRA monies and 401k monies that you've never paid taxes on. You don't have to pay taxes sometimes. It depends on where and when, where you are in the tax bracket, if you've filled or haven't filled above the standard deductions, the elderly deductions, any charitable deductions, if you do it properly. There are many ways to navigate the taxation on dollars you've never paid taxes on and to navigate the taxation on your Social Security. And then if you're smart and you really know how to strategize, if you can hold yourself in the 12% tax bracket, none of your capital gains are taxable or dividends are taxable. Now, I I said it fast, Paul, and it's a reason why the class is eight hours in length. But the impact on understanding Social Security, when, how, holistically, not making a decision in a vacuum, just looking at Social Security, is the, one of the most critical decisions they're going to make, probably the most critical decision around retirement. Yeah, I mean, because we do this every day. This is what we see, right? We, know, we understand this. We appreciate this, but most people don't, don't appreciate it, and they're making these decisions in a vacuum. And, and, and again, as, as you said, Social Security is a perfect example where people aren't understanding that 85% of your Social Security can be tax, can be taxable. And if you're trying to do really good tax planning before the government forces you to take your required distributions, you may not actually want to take Social Security. It's all part of the calculation. I, you know, I think one of the things that people don't really appreciate is the tax bracket they're going to be in later in their life. And it's a strange, it's sort of a strange predicament for many people because most people actually want less income in their 70s and 80s, right? Most people recognize they're not going to spend in their 70s and 80s, they're going to spend in their 50s and 60s. However, the government's going to force you to take most likely more than what you want and it's all taxable. And that's the power of tax planning. If we can anticipate that and we can do some things now to head off that future storm, you're going to be in a much better position. And, you know, again, we're going to get into that in the next segment, but I think that's the key to planning. Paul, it's funny because you're exactly right, but, but you know, people have gotten to where they've, the success they've had by making decisions very differently than the, how they're going to need to make decisions around their finances and money in retirement. It, it, it's so different, right? They have driven success in terms of their financial situation by pulling two levers, by saving a lot better than most and by investing 
and investing a lot. Now, this is going to shock people, and they're not going to like hearing this, but what you invest in will not drive your success in retirement. It's where you take your income from, what investment you're taking it from, during different times of market volatility and in different tax brackets. So it's managing it all. But the only way to build a plan to go forward is to understand if you did no planning at all, if I did nothing, how much money would I be forced to withdraw in my 70s? How much is my pension if I take my pension instead of lump sum? How much is my RMDs, required minimum distributions? How much is my Social Security? How much money will I be forced to take in my mid-70s? And we teach you how to figure this out in, your, in, in the class. And then what marginal tax rate will I be in my 70s based upon today's tax laws? And what effective tax rate? Now, once I have that, now I, I am armed with enough information to be able to know what I should be investing in, where I should be pulling my money out, when I should be taking my Social Security. You can't just use a calculator online to tell you what, when, and how to take your Social Security because you're just looking at a gross benefit before taxes of only your Social Security, not any of your other dollars and the impact it has. So this is how you save, can save hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars. In fact, go to our website. You can look at our sample plan. It's a 30-minute webinar that we walk through. In that plan, it's a $2 million retiree. That plan saves four to, I'm sorry, five to $600,000 in taxes. That's what we'll teach you in the class. All you have to do is make a $29 donation to, to register. If you'd like to go attend, go to retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org. And we'll return more with Kirk and Paul straight ahead. We're glad you're with us. This is the Retirement Education Hour. Megan Mozak here with financial instructors Kirk Cassidy and Dr. Paul Mettler. Kirk and Paul are with the Retirement Education Foundation. You can meet them and other financial instructors just like them from the foundation at the courses we've been telling you about held at major local colleges and universities. And of course, these are these are classes and courses designed to go deep into retirement planning concepts. They're almost like a master's level course, if you will. It's either a one day, all day course, or you can split it up over two days. It's your choice. You can find out more at the website, which is retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org. You can also call to get registered 800-240-8981. That's 800-240-8981. In Michigan, if you're listening there, hello, we say uh, uh, welcome to you. And you can attend at the University of Michigan, Eastern Michigan University, Michigan State University, the Novi or Troy campus, or Oakland University. And if you're listening in the state of Missouri, welcome as well. Go to the website to find locations of the colleges and universities in your community offering these courses. Go to Retirement Planning, edu. Dot org And these courses are also streamed live. So that's another way that you can attend. You can also go back and listen to this very show or many others in our library. Simply find it wherever you find your favorite podcast. Search for Retirement Education Hour. I want to get back to the topic at hand, which is taxes. And of course, Kirk and Paul, when people are thinking about taxes in retirement, we want to maximize our spending power. That means we want to pay our fair share in taxes, but really not a penny more. You say that there's a tool that sometimes gets overlooked as a way to drive taxes down in retirement. Tell us about that. So one of the things that we teach in the course are one of the major aspects is around tax planning, minimizing taxes so that our money lasts longer or we can retire earlier. The less money we pay in taxes in retirement, the longer my money will last before I outlive it, right? So one area that is is just ignored either because people are not philanthropic or they are philanthropic, but they don't know how to properly make the donations to their local religious organizations or charities that they support. They're Even if they're doing it, they're, they're typically doing it wrong now. It's like 98% of baby boomers once they retire, will no longer be itemizing. So when they give to charity, when they give their money to charity, they no longer are getting tax benefits because the government gives us 
standard and elderly deductions up front. In fact, today, it's almost $30,000 a year you're allowed to earn if you're over the age of 65 and married, and you'll pay no income taxes on it, right? That, you automatically get that. So unless you itemize, and that itemization of donations and all the things you would itemize is exceeds that $30,000, you're not getting a deduction for giving. So there are different ways to give so you can still capture that deduction. And one of those is using something called a donor advised fund, or think of it as a charitable savings account. So you're going to make a donation of highly appreciated stocks or investments, those with big tax liabilities or even cash. And the advantage of giving and bunching it, making a larger donation up front, you can put it in your own like personal savings account that you can then give out to charities over your lifetime whenever you want. But because you put it in now, up front, you get a full charitable deduction up front for what you put in that you don't plan to give until later. So you get an advanced deduction right now instead of waiting and giving it out in little pieces. We're going to fund the savings account up front, get the deduction. That's going to allow us to offset are other capital gains we might have. That's going to allow you to offset some of the Roth conversions that many of you should be doing strategically that we'll teach in the class. Paul, name a few other. Well, yeah, actually, can, if you mind, if I, can say one, if, if I can just say one more thing about this, yes. because well, every time we talk about donor advice funds, my first instinct is, is to think that there are going to be some listeners who may not be overly philanthropic who are tuning us out. And what I want to say to you, if you're one of them, is that even if you're not philanthropic, there are charitable strategies that you ultimately still will benefit from and help a charity. In fact, Kirk, I, 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 one of those are charitable trusts, and, and we don't have time to get into them, but I, I, I just think about, I think about a, a, someone in our private practice who was not overly charitable, but because of the charitable trust we created, ended up more money in their pocket because they didn't have to pay nearly the capital gains that they were going to have to pay and help to charity. So, folks, even if you're not terribly philanthropic, there are charitable strategies that will help you and also help charities as well. Well, let me connect to that a little bit because sometimes people will listen to this and say, this sounds too good to be true. First, remember, we are a national charity teaching this to you. This isn't something that we're trying to sell you, right? Re recognize this is education. This is the purpose of the charity that was founded 12 years ago is to give you one to $10 million people that are retiring with one to $10 million strategies that the super wealthy have been utilizing for years, but there are no advisors willing to do for you because you don't have enough wealth for them to charge you what they need to charge you to utilize these strategies. So we're going to teach them to you so you can learn how to do them yourself and find them yourself. So understand so even if you're not, if you're just, just giving $5,000 a year. Okay. But okay. How many years in retirement are you going to live? Are you going to live 10 years, 20 years? So you can put a hundred thousand dollars in a charitable savings account. And now you've got a hundred thousand dollars of deductions to offset any other capital gains you have. And I'll help you offset some of your Roth conversions you're going to do to minimize your taxes over your lifetime. And what you find if you understand when, how to map out these strategies, that what you gave was less than the amount of tax savings you had over your lifetime. And I think that's what Paul was describing. So this is really applicable for people with uh, highly appreciated uh, rental properties or in uh, uh, buildings, businesses, anything that is highly appreciated. You use charitable strategies to minimize taxes, to support the charities, but you end up in many cases and with more money in your pocket over your lifetime than you actually gave away. But you guys aren't hearing about it. You're not familiar with it. It's complicated. And that's one of the reasons why the classes is eight hours. This is one of the topics we'll tackle, along with something called QCDs. And maybe in the next segment, we'll open with that because everyone that's over the age of 70 and a half, and when you have to start taking your required minimum distributions, this is a, if you give anything to charity, this is a way you can give a little bit every year and you can save a tremendous amount of taxes on all of your money. So register for one of these eight-hour classes that are at the major universities in your area. We're also streaming them live. If you'd like to register, go to retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org. And we'll return with Kirk and Paul right after this. 
Glad you've been tuned in to the Retirement Education Hour. Hi, everyone. I'm Megan Mozak here with financial instructors Kurt Cassidy and Dr. Paul Mettler, both with the Retirement Education Foundation. We want to make sure you're registered for the foundation's courses. These are master's level type courses held at major colleges and universities near you. If you're listening in Michigan, these are held at the University of Michigan, Eastern Michigan University, Michigan State University, both the Novi and Troy campus or Oakland University. In Missouri, we want you to go to the website to check locations of colleges and universities near you. Retirementplanningedu.org is the web address. Again, that's retirementplanningedu.org. You can also call to get get registered at 800-240-8981. That's 800-240-8981. And keep in mind, this program today, you can find it wherever you find your favorite podcast. Listen to this one, share it with a friend, or listen to many others in our library. Just search for Retirement Education Hour. I want to get back to the topic at hand today. It's a big one. It's tax planning and how this affects your retirement. What drives success around tax planning as it relates to retirement specifically, Kirk? Megan, we always finish our shows. We've been doing these radio shows for many, many years now. We always finish the last segment with what a real comprehensive holistic retirement plan looks like. And candidly, that's what drives minimizing taxes, but it's complicated. So I want to talk about that. But before I do, we did not finish the last segment. There was something we missed, and I think it's really important, that I think impacts So many people around the country who are listening, many of you are giving your 3,000, 5,000, 10,000, 20, 30, 50, whatever it is to charity every single year, your religious organizations, church, synagogues, whatever you support, you guys are doing that forever. Now, once you turn 70 and a half, there is a strategy that not a lot of people talk about that understand that is hugely powerful. They're called QCDs are qualified charitable distribution. This allows you to take some or all of your required minimum distributions and give them directly to charity. And if you do this properly, we get to take that taxable income, that required minimum distribution, we get to take some or all of that right off of our total taxable income. We call this an above the line deduction. So now I get my full standard deduction an elderly deduction, and I get to remove some or all of my required minimum distribution from being taxable. Very, very powerful because then that reduces the taxable portion of your Social Security. Then it reduces, potentially eliminates taxes on dividends and long-term capital gains. So that's the answer. What drives success in retirement? How do I minimize taxes in retirement? It's a plan. And the plan, and let me tell you what a plan is. A plan is going to outline for 30 years the single most efficient path to take income from every single different account you have. You're going to have non-IRA money. You're going to have IRA, 401k1 money. You're going to have pension money. You're, you might have a lump sum. Some of you might have disability. There's all these sources of money that you receive. And how and when do I take that from my different investments and different accounts during different market conditions will drive your success and will minimize your taxes if you know how to fill brackets, not bump brackets. But Paul, the only way they'll be able to do this and know how and when to do it is going to be, well, they got to come to a class because they really need to understand what the tax picture is going to look like if they do no planning when they are in their 70s and 80s. And if we know what it looks like in their 70s and 80s by using some projections, we can then work backwards and literally run hundreds and hundreds of iterations to find the most efficient path. There's no software that does this. You're going to have to learn how to do this. That's what we teach you in the class. When, how, why to make all of your decisions around investing, income planning. And that's why it's eight hours and it's a master's level course, Paul. Yeah, you know, as you were talking about the qualified charitable distributions, I was thinking, you know, I can't help but think of of people that we've met in their 70s, right? So you can take a qualified charitable distribution at age 70 and a half, even though you may not be required to take your distribution still 73 or 75. Yep. But I think of all those people in their 70s, 80s, who are being forced to take so much money that they don't want, right? Being taxed on all of it, and they still want to be a little charitable. This is a perfect example 
of how, how, how if you're strategic, you could be charitable late in your life, save a lot of taxes. But the problem is most people don't understand it. Most people aren't planning it out. And part of that is because, you know, if you, if you, all of us get information about tax classes, we're all getting bombarded by, you know, by dinner seminars. People don't fully appreciate that this class that we're talking about, this isn't a class to sell anything, right? This is a comprehensive class to teach you how to build a comprehensive plan. It's not about just taxes. It's not about just charity. It's not about just legacy or income planning. It's all of it. There's so many levers that you need to understand how to pull to really build a comprehensive plan. And, and again, that's why it's eight hours. It's not just one thing. Kirk, there are many things that people have to understand. Paul, it's, it's why it's in a university setting. It's why it tends to attract. It really is designed for that person that, you know, may have called seven hundred, seven hundred fifty thousand dollars $750,000 or more. It, it's the b- average baby boomer. There's not a lot of different strategies to utilize because there's not the wealth. But those of you, one, three, five, ten, you have wealth that allows you to strat- strategically take these dollars. And oh, by the way, if you do it properly, you can withdraw seven, eight, nine percent withdrawal rates. Meaning, you got two million dollars saved at sixty-five years old. You can have one hundred sixty thousand dollars a year without any chance of outliving your income if you build it properly and save on taxes, and know where to pivot, when to pivot during different market time uh, volatility. From an income perspective, not market timing your investments, no one can do that. So attend one of these eight-hour classes being taught at most of the major universities and colleges in your areas. All you have to do is make a $29 donation to charity. That's all it is. Register at retirementplanningedu.org. Retirement Education Foundation is a fiscally sponsored program of United Charitable, a registered 501c3 public charity. Investing involves risk, including the potential loss of principal. Any insurance discussed in this show is backed by the financial strength and claims paying abilities of the issuing carrier. This radio show is intended for informational purposes only. It is not intended to be used as the sole basis for financial decisions, nor should it be construed as advice designed to meet the particular needs of an individual's situation. Retirement Education Foundation is not permitted to offer, and no statement made during this show shall constitute tax or legal advice. Our firm is not affiliated with or endorsed by the U.S. government or any governmental agency. The information and opinions contained herein provided by third parties have been obtained from sources believed to be reliable, but accuracy and completeness cannot be guaranteed by Retirement Education Foundation. This radio show is paid for by the Retirement Education Foundation.